what's going on everybody it's your boy Chris coming at you for another Duel and Bros video and today I am really excited to get back into covering some Lurkana content okay now it has been a minute because uh, I just had some personal stuff going on and um, now I got my schedule uh, is very different now and so I had to figure out how I was gonna fit doing videos into my new schedule and I think I got it figured out to where you know, I can start resuming doing my videos so uh, be on the lookout for some deck breakdown and gameplay uh, for those deck breakdowns. And now today there is no gameplay because instead the set just came out a few days ago, right? I'm going to bring you guys six decks, six decks, okay, that you can use as a starting point or uh, maybe uh, if you look at my decks and you're like, oh, this guy's dumb, you know, I'm definitely not going to use these cards. I'm going to use these other cards that I like. That's cool too. Thanks for the view. But, uh, you know, I like to build decks, I like to make Lorcana videos, so uh, put that together and we got a video about six decks for a brand new set that just came out. So, uh, I'm going to not be as in-depth as normal, I'm going to, you know, try to go a little fast that way, it's not just me rambling into uh, a screen for like an hour because I can explain every card, but it would take forever. So I'm just kind of going to go over the changes. And just know, I will be doing uh, deck breakdowns uh, for uh, pretty much most of these decks, unless I just, uh, it turns out that they're just not very good, and it was just wasn't a very good idea of mine. Uh, and, but um, yeah, I'm going to try to do all the fun decks that I can come up with. I'm going to bring uh, full-on deck breakdowns with gameplay. But let's get into it, Mark. Let's get into this. these six decks to start out with set four, uh, figuring out what is the meta going to be and uh, what everybody likes playing. So um, a big thing for green steel discard last set was one drops. Not a lot of one drops to be played. And one of the only good one drops was uninkable. Now we have inkable one drops and all of them can be shifted upon. So they just match beautifully with our Bucky discard plan, okay? So just imagine last set, green steel, good. Imagine this set, great, okay? Love it. All the um, things that I kind of had issues with the deck where I was like, ooh, no, this is where it's kind of tough sometimes. I don't know. It feel, it, at least when I look at the deck, it seems like it's been fixed. So, um, you know, we... We have 17 uninkables, but we have two hidden ink caster. You draw a card, and every card in your hand is considered to be uh, inkable. So, you know, if you draw a whole new world when you don't want it, you can ink it. Or, you know, any other card, <laughs> you can ink it. So, you know, just that card is really, really good. I think it opens up a lot of possibilities. I don't think you want to base the deck around it because it doesn't really have any field presence for you. You know what I mean? You're just drawing a card, and then you can ink cards that you normally can ink. So, like, it's really good as a tech card, but if you try to go up to like three or four, I think you're putting yourself in a lot of trouble there. Um, now, uh, we have the big Diablo, right? The three drop Diablo. You can shift that bad boy with discarding an action. That is just so fun, right? You know, uh, I don't recommend doing it on turn one just because Diablo needs to be exerted anyway for its effect to really pop off. So you might as well wait. And if they're going to use a damaging action to get rid of your one drop Diablo, pfft, let them just get rid of the one drop Diablo. That way you at least save your uh, three drop Diablo. Because even if you don't shift it with an action card, you can still play it. You can still hard play it on three after Bucky. So it's just a good card all the way around. Uh, and then uh, the Pegasus combo, the one drop evasive Pegasus. Pascal was really good uh, for a long time. And Pegasus is a permanent evasive Pascal. So I think it's just going to be uh, really popping off. And it's just... This Pegasus for shifting for three, giving evasive to everything for that turn when you shift, and it being permanently evasive, and it quests for two, just, ah, oh, I really like that card as well. Uh, it pairs very good with the Robin Hood, and again, to shift after Bucky. Just very, very good. We have so many shiftable characters. No longer need, like, uh, the seven drop Cindy, uh, you know, to, to just to get to a, a really good amount of... Uh, shiftable characters just because you're trying to go fast now as well uh, I don't think the big Cindy will be a factor unless it just turns out that aggro uh, gets stomped on by the meta and then it turns into a more control type meta then we'll see but I don't know this I think this feels good no big Cindy uh, I think I think six is as high as you want to go with your characters 
Uh, we got the new aerial because the new aerial is just bonkers. There's two of them, the steel one and the, the blue one. They're both good. Uh, this one has three attack, eight health. Uh, I believe I don't have everything memorized. It shifts for six. We don't have any aerials to shift for. And whenever you play a song, uh, you do you pay two and you can deal three damage to another character and it quests for two. It's a great card. Okay, sorry, this uh, the long guys were just uh, working really close to my window, so just want to wait for them to pass, get done with what they were doing. So uh, we covered Ariel, the hidden ink caster, and then now all we got left to talk about is let's not talk about Bruno. What a great card! Uh, you know, you it's a song, it's a five drop song, it's inkable. Um, when you sing it, uh, you choose an opponent's character, it goes back to their hand. And then they have to discard a card at random from their hand. So you could potentially get something better. Or, you know, you if they only had one card, uh, on the or if they have no cards... I almost messed that up. Come on, get it right, Chris. If they have no cards in hand, you can pick any character on the field. It goes back into their hand, and there's only one card in their hand. So then, bam, it, uh, it is like a removal card, too. So um, very, very good. You know, it has a lot of interesting... Uh, instances it's not a straight removal card um there's a little bit of setup but uh in a discard deck i think you know it's kind of like a pseudo removal card and i really like it so um all in all there's 17 uninkables and you got two of the hidden ink caster to help fix any uh bad uninkable draws potentially and uh it also lets you draw when you play it so it, it, you know it's a pretty good card uh but again don't overload yourself on it all right um, a lot of the uninkables now are songs. Um, it is just the Hidden Ink Caster and the Diablo. So um, you should be good on being able to play or being able to ink consistently and then not have to worry about um, using ink to, you know, play uninkable cards. Uh, so that's one of the con that's one of the good things that Amber Steel has with uh, having all those songs. So this deck kind of has that similar feature now. Uh, so yeah, I just think this is really fun and uh, yeah, let's move on to the next deck Don't want to ramble too much on about that But yeah, I think this deck is going to be a lot of fun to play um, and be on the lookout because you never know Greed Steel was really good last set. I think it's going to be great this set Okay, now we got green purple now green purple rose to the top of uh, You know the meta for like the England's championship. It is just a very very good aggro deck and again, another thing that I think, I think all the color combos got um, really, really good uh, power-ups. So I really think that this that this set is going to be shaken up pretty good. I like it. I, I see a lot of potential in a lot of the cards that came out. Um, so what's new with this deck? Uh, you know, I don't really think I actually have covered the new uh, green-purple deck uh, on this channel, so maybe this will be one of the first ones I do an actual deck breakdown on, because the last time I did green-purple was at the beginning of Inklands, and it was that was very different from what it ended up being. Um, we, of course, got the Diablo combo again, and we got the Pegasus combo again, and, uh, you know, those things are just great. Uh, the Pegasus, you know, will help turn your Pinocchio, your two-drop Pinocchio evasive, so you could safely quest... Uh, with your Pinocchio, uh, and then, you know, you can bounce with Pinocchio, uh, you know, you have your bounce uh, tactics still. So just very, very cool. Um, there, then you have the 7-drop uh, Ursula in this deck to go as a good shifter uh, for your 2 or 3-drop Ursula. And then you have Friends and Sudden Chill for your 3-drop Ursula. Uh, the Hidden Ink Caster again. You know where I think this deck also is at seventeen on inkables with with this. I think that's I think that's a good number is seventeen with two of those because then you, know, you draw you play it and that if you continuously have bad draws then uh, you know you can just kind of self fix that and uh, but yeah this deck uh, I, it seems like a lot of fun. Okay, um, then hey hey this three drop hey hey is really cool. At first I had three of them in here then I dropped another two because realistically you're never really going to play them on curve because unless you're going to get to blue. You should be even in ink uh, on turn three because you have to ink on turn three to play him. So you would be even with your opponent. So uh, you'd have to play him on like turn four. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I think two is better than three. Uh, although I think it's a great card. And if it does get bumped up to three because I'm wrong, it wouldn't surprise me. 
Um, but whenever you play him, if you have less ink than your opponent, you can put the top card of your deck into your ink well exerted. So he's just a way to speed that ink up, and he quests for two. So just very, very good. Um, yeah, this deck is just very, very fast. And um, just, yeah, I really, really like how this deck is playing out. I have it built in person, and I think it's a lot of fun to play personally. Um, and then we got the Cricky, the lucky Cricket card. Uh, three attack and four health. Quest for three, so a big quester. It's just something that, uh, you know, just really helped put the pressure on with this deck. His effect is when you play this uh, card, all of your characters get plus three attack this turn. Not challenger three, plus three attack. Yeah, not that I guess it would matter uh, in, in that sense, but man, that card is really good. Uh, just if you did need to clear the board for whatever reason, you just, boom, you played Cricky, and if you wanted to attack everything, then bam. Or if you just need a three-quester to help finish the game, Cricky's your guy too. Just very, very good. Um, and now we have a little bit of the bouncy bounties, right? So I think Lucifer is a good call, okay? Um, you know, this has some discard potential in here. You know, you have the Cursed Merfolk, the two-drop uh, um, Ursula, um, and then, uh, you know, you got your sudden chills. So it's not like a ton, a ton of discard, but I think, uh, the aggro with a touch of discard is nice. And right now I like Lucifer. M maybe we figure out a, a better card, uh, to go other than the Lucifer, but right now I'm kind of liking it. I'm really liking how it's playing out. A lot of the times when you get to play him, your opponent will have either, you know, one, two, very rare, and you know, sometimes three uh, cards in their hand, and um, yeah, it's just, it's really playing out well, um, but you know, there is a lot of draw, a lot more draw cards in in the in the, this set, so we'll see how this kind of shakes out. Uh, Lucifer may end up not being the option uh, to play in a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, as of right now, I like him. Um, that seven draw Ursula is just so good, you know, she has four attacks, seven health, quest for three, uh, she shifts for five, so uh, really, the, if you played it right, every the highest thing that you really need ink for is in this deck is five. I don't really ever think you should go to seven to play here, but if it happens, it happens. Uh, you never know what happens in a game, but uh, you have plenty of shift options for her. Um, no, no other characters can sing songs except her while she's on the field, and so she, that's pretty good. You can use that to your benefit. There's not too many songs. Uh, that we have to play, so you can just use that against your opponent, and then whenever she quests, you can exert chosen opposing characters. So, you know, um, there's a lot of things that can be done with that card. You know, we have, uh, like, the Madame Mims that we could use uh, to attack. Um, so it's just, you know, and then, you know, of course, Cricky. Uh, you know, if we had played uh, Cricky after we quested with Ursula, and you know, we wanted to get rid of something, we could do that. So I think this deck is a lot of fun. We still have that, uh, let's talk about Bruno card that we talked about from that last green steel deck too. I mean, that card is just really, really good. Um, to be honest with you guys, I only pulled three, so that's why these decks have three. Um, because that's like kind of what I have in my brain. Uh, but if you want to bump it up to four, I mean, I really like it. But I think three is fine, to be honest, because it's five drop. If it was like a four drop, even, um, yeah, I'd, be, I'd bump it up to five. But um, that's another card that if it gets bumped up to four, I, you know, okay. I would be uh, surprised at it. But yeah, this is, you know, aggro green purple. That's all the new stuff from aggro green purple. Um, I have a lot of fun playing this deck. Uh, you put a lot of pressure on with the Pinocchio and the Cursed Merfolk. Um, and then, you know, of course you have like the Pegasus and Diablo combo. If you want to do that, uh, you just have a lot of options. Uh, I think there's just a lot more uh, versatility to the beginning of the way you can play this deck. So you can just kind of um, move a uh, few different ways if you want to. It's not always, you know, you know, play this and play Pinocchio, bounce Pinocchio, but you know, now you can do multiple things. So we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, let's move on to the next deck. Okay, so now we got red, purple, and um, this deck is, you know, red, purple has been a popular color combination for a very long time. And um, I have actually been known to never really like to play what everybody else is playing with red purple um so i don't know how this list fares up against what other people are trying to play or whatever but because you know i like to build decks myself so uh sometimes i may not look for decks and because red purple isn't my favorite to play because everybody else plays it i don't know i don't really research it a lot so i don't know how close or whatnot it is 
to what other people are trying to do. But, um, you know, I got the Turner Bugs followers in here uh, for the draw power potentially if you need turn one draw power. You got the Rafiki for the Challenger up. Uh, and you got the Madame Mim uh, to bounce anything. You got the, the Flynn Rider. Uh, the new Flynn Rider that if you have a, a, a card with a character with a higher attack and any of your opposing characters when you start your turn gain three lore. He's not really there for turn two curve play, but um, you know, I think later in the game he could really help you catch up on lore if you need to. Um, you know, then we have of course that Fox Madam Mim. Then you got the the new three drop uninkable Sisu to help uh, go against some of that aggro that you're gonna see more than likely and it's evasive. So it can just, you know, it can quest need be if you just need to play it as like a quester, as an evasive quester. Um, then we have the inkable three drop Sisu, just very, very good. One attack, four health, gets one plus one attack for every card in your opponent's hand and it quests for two. So that, that card is just very, very good. Both of those could be used as a shifter for the big Sisu that we're going to get into later. We have the goat and the rabbit combo, can't go wrong with those uh, in the deck, staples of red purple nowadays. Um, then we got Maui, a staple since the beginning. Lady Tremaine, you know, we all know about Lady Tremaine and Madame Medusa, those two deadly girls. I just split it between two and two. There's plenty of removal now everywhere. I think you can just split those between two and two. Even with last set, you know, uh, it went from four Lady Tremaine to like, you know, three Medusa and three Lady Tremaine or four Medusa and two Lady Tremaine, you know, uh, just depending on what your personal preference is. I think there's just so much removal. I think this is fine, two and two. Uh, and it gives you, allows you some more room for other uninkables that need to be fit into the deck. Uh, and then we have a 7-drop inkable that's good to, that doesn't require you to bounce two cards, uh, it, you know, because that was, that, I like that Madame M Dragon, but, you know, unless you can, you know, you gotta bounce two characters, so you're not always able to do that. Um, now you can just play this Ursula, uh, 4 attack, 7 health, you know, we talked about her a second ago. There's no shifties in here for her, but she quests for three, and no other song, no songs can be sang by characters except for her. Uh, and then, you know, when you uh, quest with her, you can exert a chosen opposing character, and that's just really good, especially with a deck with a lot of high attack characters like this. Um, so, just really, really like her. And then we got the eight drop Sisu, just very, very good. Five attack, four health, quest for three, can shift for six. So, if you get one of those other Sisus out, then you shift this bad boy on turn six to help. Uh, even get it out a turn faster to get rid of some of those to help uh, contest aggro, right? Um, and his uh, ability is whenever you play him, every opposing character with two attack or less gets destroyed. And it is great. Um, yeah, I just really like that Sisu. Um, it's really, really good to help top off as like a board clear on top of be prepared. But instead of, you know, having to worry about your characters... Uh, you can, uh, you know, drop one, be prepared down, and you do two Sisu, and that way you have that buffer uh, to go against, you have five cards that can really board clear against aggro. Um, then we have that Maleficent, of course. Maleficent's been a staple since the, since the beginning. Friends on the other side, staple since the beginning. Uh, and then B, uh, and then, like, the B King, Undisputed. Very, very good four drop song. It's a song, and it's like, it's effect is essentially like Lady Tremaine, uh, you know, each opposing caster chooses a card and they banish it. So, uh, you know, you can have your Merlins, uh, your goat, or your rabbit sing it. I really, really like that. And also gives Maui uh, something to sing as well, just in case you don't want to attack something with Maui. It's like they're trying to set you up if it's some bait. Uh, instead, you can do Be King Undisputed Sing that with Maui. So I just really, really like that. Um, then we have A Pirate's Life, just very, very good. A six drop song. Uh, you know, each opponent loses two lore and you gain two lore. Very, very good to help just uh, close the gap or finish or, you know, widen a gap or, uh, you know, just uh, close out a game if you need to uh, get closer to your opponent. And of course, we have Be Prepared, just as always been in the deck. It's a great card, one of the best cards they ever printed, one of the most annoying cards they ever printed. But if you're playing red, it's got to be in the deck. So that's this deck. Um, I think it'll be fun to play. I think there will be a lot more stuff to play, so. Uh, I think if you're going to try red purple, uh, I think now would be a good time because I think people are going to try a lot of other stuff. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm just hoping that there's a, a good variety in this set. Um, you know, it's getting more and more there the more sets that come out as this game uh, progresses. And I'm really excited. I can't wait until, you know, you can show up at a tournament and just see pretty much every color combination represented. Uh, let's move on to the next deck.
All right, now we got Ariel's Treasure, Blue Steel. So I think Blue Steel is going to be very, very fun as well. Okay, so now this deck is kind of like Blue-Red, right? But uh, you get the Lucky Nine package and you're... And you're gonna do, you know, try to get to the Tomatoa, really get up there and ink right. But uh, you do damage instead of straight removal, and um, uh, I, you know, I think you have you have more draw, uh, really than with blue red. I mean, with you have a blue red. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, your one drops are Popsicle, Forest Sphere, and Robin Hood. So look out for those. They're all inkable. Uh, you know, it's very consistent so far with all the decks I've shown you. It's just a lot of one-drop inkable cards. Just, you know, a lot of things are, ink you know, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, just not having a bunch of uninkable one-drops because, you know, one-drops being inkable are very good because you can play them early and when you draw them late, they're very good ink fodder for a late game, you know, if you don't want to use them as like a shifter or something. Um, okay, and then uh, the two drops really... Uh, is only one jump ahead okay now um you gotta have a weakness in a deck somewhere and i when i was building this deck i was just kind of looking at everything and i was like mm, you know, like you could put scuttle in here but um i don't know i don't know how i feel about it i think i think i'd rather um just do like what i'm doing now because i think playing a popsicle or a Fortis sphere on turn two is also okay um and then um on turn three uh, we have the queen. Um, I really, really like the queen, but she's playing B, right? Uh, you know, or plan A would be you want to play Fishbone Quill, or I guess I guess she's playing C because uh, you would either want to play Fishbone Quill first or Great Stone Dragon on uh, turn three, and uh, and then plan C would be the queen to look for one of those and play it if you didn't have that in your hand. Uh, but she is inkable, so you know. She's not that bad, uh, but yeah, I just, I, you don't want too much of her, she only quests for one, but, you know, she is kind of like uh, the aerial on crack for, um, for blue, and the reason why we don't have Scuttle is because we have her, and yeah, I just, I don't really like, like, I like Scuttle, but not in this particular deck, just because, um, besides two drops, you can play everywhere else, um, so, yeah, and you really want to look for that one jump ahead. One jump ahead is just so good. Um, and then we get the four drop bell to uh, be popped up with the lucky dime later in the game. Don't think about her at the beginning. You got the high arm to move the draw with your items. Uh, you got the beast for draw, of course, and, you know, potential attack if he has damage on him. The Robin Hood, the big one to go with the Robin Hood package. Ariel, the new, uh, you know, blue Ariel. So uh, because uh, we have a lot of items, you want to make sure you have Ariel, this Ariel in the deck, and she quests for five when you have more items than your opponent. She has Ward. So very, very good. Even though she only has three attacks, she can avoid the Madame Medusa. But she doesn't avoid board clear, like be prepared. So, uh, and she doesn't avoid Lady Tremaine. So just, you know, pick and choose. But people will probably try to lean towards more Madame Medusa, especially if they're doing blue-red. We'll get into that later. Uh, and then we got the three uh, of this Tinker Bells, Big Tink. Big Tink is just really good, help against aggro. And because you uh, can ink a lot faster potentially with this deck and get to six faster, you know, there's uh, no need for sh needing to shift. And you can really easily put her in. Two of the seven drop Cindy, because you're probably going to be able to get to seven because of Great Stone Dragon, Fishbone Quill, one jump ahead. Uh, you know, I think it's okay to leave her in. Uh, she's a strong character. And, uh, you know, she has resist too, and she can attack ready characters. Uh, so I think she just fits well in the package. And then you got Tomatoa, you know, big Tomatoa himself. Bring back the Popsicle or the Fortisphere to draw. You know, very, very good now. He has two items to combo with that draw now with Tomatoa. Um, and then you have know, Great Stone Dragon and Fishbone Quill. I think just really going to help get you to Tomatoa and Cinderella levels faster and also Lucky Dime. So I think this deck uh, is pretty good. Uh, and uh, it has potential to be aggro better than uh, a blue-red, I think. So, um, we'll see. Although blue-red did get a lot of answers to aggro, depending on how you play. Um, but yeah, this deck, it, I think, will be a lot of fun. Uh, Blue Steel has, was fun last set to play. And a lot of people uh, really didn't like that I didn't have it uh, higher in the list, in like A-tier. But um, when I made that tier list, I was, I was trying to be really... I, I was trying... 
like I only wanted one thing to be S tier. I didn't want a bunch of things to be S. I wanted like to pick one top dog and just a couple, a few, like two or three, you know, decks that could take like A. And then you know, I didn't I didn't want to just crowd it with the first three tiers. I wanted to actually have a tier list for you guys. Um, because not everything can be S and A and B tier. Like there has to be F or D or E, you know, whatever. Uh, I forget that was a while ago, a month ago, when I did that tier list. But yeah, so uh, I like Blue Steel, and I think it has so much draw now. Uh, you don't even need Whole New World. And notice, I don't have Whole New World in here because I don't think you need it. You have a ridiculous amount of draw without it. So um, yeah, let's uh, get into the next deck. All right, now let's get into Amber Steel. I really, really like this Amber Steel deck. Um, the Philosophy Tees just, mm, just really put this deck over the edge, I think, and uh, is, this deck became much faster. Um, before I get into it super deep, uh, yes, you could easily flip-flop the flutes and the lanterns. You could play flutes if you wanted to, no big deal. I like playing lantern. Um, I think, you know, you're only limited to one lore from the flute. Probably more consistent lore, though, but the lanterns give you bigger pop-off potential with the Rockstar Stitch and the Philosotetes. So, um, yeah, I just... Yeah, this is where I'm starting off, and I really, really like it. So, Philosotides is like our Bucky, okay? Uh, as Heroes Unite, everything is a hero in this deck. Cinderella, Ariel, Stitches, the Robin Hoods, the Simba, Rapunzel, everything is a hero except Philosotides, okay? So, if you get a Philosotides out there, if you play anything, you will gain a lore. If you have two Philosotides out there, you will gain two lore every time you play a character, except if you play a third Philosotides. But it is, this is absolutely gross okay i love this deck and that's why i put it towards the back of the video that way you gotta get through the content to get to the good the goodest juicy stuff my favorite stuff i like those other decks but this one these next two decks are by far my favorite decks uh that i've created so far um for this set and um you know you have the one drop cindy to sing the bare necessities to let storm rage on the strength of the raging fire just very very good um, you know, and then you have the big Cindy to shift with her. Uh, you have this, the Rockstar Stitch combo, so you can ramp later with the Lanterns so that you can uh, play it on turn four if need be with the whole new world if need be. Uh, the Robin Hood combo, so, you know, you have just, uh, you know, two really good shifter, early shifters with the Lantern. And then also, you know, big Cindy is kind of like, eh, maybe if you, if that happens and uh, it's a good play, you can shift for uh, Cindy on turn four if you get one Lantern out. Uh, and then you have the Simbas, which, um, you know, will provide a little bit of comfort for maybe singing with that Cinderella. Uh, but mainly is, you know, for like for late mid late game with the hero business. But I think that bodyguard also will come in handy. That's why I chose Simba over something uh, else. But mainly hero, 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 hero. I'm a hero. That's what I was thinking when I was building this deck. I'm a hero. So that's why we are. We're heroes unite. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I've been back and forth, back and forth on the three drop aerial. Now we got a shift aerial for her. Boom. She stays in the deck permanently. Okay. Um, and, uh, we have, uh, three of the steel aerial to go with the four of the three drop aerial. Okay. And that was just mainly, uh, for fitting purposes. I mean, it may turn out that the big Cindy, seven drop Cindy is not necessarily needed because you don't get there often enough because it's that fast. And one of the things I would suggest to go up to 4-2 would be uh, that aerial, 6-drop aerial, and then potentially, uh, you know, one of the 1-drops or the Senba, uh, you know, just to help uh, fury that stitch um, ramp. So just a lot of fun, right? Just a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, okay? Um, you know, you have the bare necessity still to look at the hand. You have to let the storm rage on. To be saying by the Cinderella, you know, deal damage, draw a card. You know, nothing is really new there. You have Strength of the Raging Fire to be paired up with the Stitch combo. Uh, you can ramp into some into some characters, and then you know, pop off with Strength of the Raging Fire, potentially bigger than the Zeus would be. And then you have Whole New World, of course. Or after you empty your hand, you can sing Whole New World to get that ramp. Just continue to go, go, go. Two grab your sword so that you can. Um, you know, effectively going against aggro, and it's going to be much more effective with having just two because you have that three drop aerial to help you dig and look for um, that uh, grab your swords. So all around this deck, I think it's just a lot of fun. You have the Rapunzel to heal up people and draw at the same time. So this deck has a lot of draw power as well. Um, 
It's a lot more conditional draw power. So unlike, you know, with Blue Steel where I felt like Whole New World could come out, I think I think you want uh, to keep Whole New World here because it's a lot more conditional draw and there's a lot more instances where you'll empty your hand and your opponent still has plenty of cards. Uh, so you'll want to get rid of uh, their hand and you get a new hand. So um, that's just the differences between those two decks. And yeah, I really, really like this deck. I hope you have a lot of fun trying this one. Now on to the last deck. All right, and finally we have the other famous deck that I got for in the last set, my uh, um, most popular deck. I think the Green Steel was the second most popular, and this was uh, the most popular. Um, I made more videos about Green Steel, I think, but you know this this deck is what people want to know about last set. Um, yes, it's good again. Okay, Green Purple did um, get hand its butt to it on um, the England's Championship, but that is also the you know, when something is really good like that, like it was last set, like people are going to try to figure out a way to beat it. And when somebody figures out a way to beat it, they, because blue red was so dominant, it doesn't surprise me that everybody switched over to green purple. Um, had I not had a bunch of personal stuff going on, and uh, I probably would have played green steel. Um, you know, the first tournament I, I would have went to, I probably would have played blue red, got my butt whooped. And I, I probably would have felt like I needed to go back and play Green Steel on another one because Green Purple would have been everywhere. Um, but I had some stuff going on, so unfortunately I just couldn't participate. I had other stuff, other priorities I had to worry about. So, um, you know, real life gets in the way of card games sometimes. But here we are with this brand new blue-red deck that I think is very, very nasty, okay? We have uh, the Ice Block to lower people's attack, character's attack, so that they can get in range of your removal if they aren't in range. So let's say, you know, you need something to go down one attack so that the three drop Sisu can remove it. Perfect. Maybe something is one or two attack away from being mad and Medusa. Ice block. Perfect. Brawl. You need something to get down to two attack or less. Ice block. Perfect. So with ice block, at first, it it's like, it's okay. You read it by itself, you're like, whatever, this card could be okay. But you start pairing it with the combos. Very, very, very good, okay? Um, and paired with Develop Your Brain, those are our one drops. So um, this was never a deck that was going to pop off on turn one. Well, of course, in Popsicle. Uh, that was just going to start popping off turn one. Uh, you know, this has always been a deck about, I'm going to get to six ink very fast. And you have to stop me from getting to six ink very fast. Well, before it was seven. Now it's six because of the Sisu. This the um, eight drop Sisu because of the shifting capabilities of it. Um, so now you can shift for it even faster. Um, you know you have another option to get rid of aggro cards, um, like, like from be prepared to Sisu because you could, if you got a god hand, you could potentially be prepared an aggro deck and come back. But that very very rarely happened. Like less than ten percent uh, would that happen. Now, just because of the shift with the Sisu, there's just, you know, there's a lot more uh, things you can do, I think. Um, the only reason there's not three of the eight drop Sisus is because of um, just unequal count. It's already a lot. So um, we'll get into that later. Um, we'll get over the count. But um, we have that unequal three drop Sisu, and now we have the inkable three drop Sisu, just very, very good. You know, we talked about, you know, both of these guys earlier. Just, you know, very, very good. Um, then we have the Bell for the Lucky Dime, like with the Blue Steel that we talked about earlier. Hiram for the draw power for the items, like what we talked about earlier. Maui, 6 attack, 5 health with Rush. I mean, you got to play it with Red. And we got 4 Madame Medusas, and we have no Lady Tremains because of the Ice Block. So, uh, you know, in Red Purple, I suggested, you know, splitting them. Um, because of the ice blocks, I think this is where you go. I think this is where you go. Um, and you know, you're inking faster, so if it comes to a scenario where it's about having war and stuff like that, if they have multiple characters and the character you want to get rid of has war, just be prepared. Um, so yeah, there's that. Or, you know, do the Sisu if you can. Um, and then we have the 8-drop Sisu. 5 attack, 4 health, you know, like we talked about earlier, gets rid of the 2-attack the two drop character, uh, the two attack characters. Just very, very good. I really like Sisu. Um, you know, Tomato, of course, to go with the Lucky Dime, bring back the items, you know, Tomato has been a fan favorite since the beginning, people were sad that he didn't work out in, in set one and set two, 
But man, he did he hit the ground running with set three with this blue red business. Um, four drop Maleficent, you know, just more removal, 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 removal. Get more ink and then remove everything. Get more ink and then remove everything. That's what this deck does. Um, and you got the one jump aheads, of course, to develop your brains. Uh, the be prepared, three be prepared. Because it because there is more removal spread throughout the deck, and uh, it's a lot more targeted removal and whatnot. Um, and you have the 8-drop Sisu, you can go down to 3 be prepared. It's really not a big deal. Uh, normally, before now, it was sacrilegious if you're playing red, you know, to not have like 4 be prepared, but it's okay now. Um, you gotta have max fish monk quills and you gotta have 2 lucky dimes, you know, uh, as a eight, like an 18 card change, I think, in the deck. And then, um, oh, I think I completely skipped over Scuttle for whatever reason, but Scuttle it is our 2-drop for the deck now over Gaston. Um, you know, Gaston... It was like a body there for aggro and against locations. Locations kind of got weeded out a little bit. And aggro is really what gives this thing trouble. And so now with Ice Block and all the little things that we have now to destroy aggro cards, Scuttle can fit in perfect. It has one attack, so it'll take out a little uh, Pinocchio or Maleficent or like a little one-drop Lilo if need be. But his main thing is, is he is like the aerial for um, items. Okay, now why not... Um, the queen legendary queen chris why not you know she's better you can play the three drop for free well it comes in exerted and i don't want my fishbone quill coming in exerted with this deck this deck specifically needs to get online as fast as possible i'm trying to grab the fishbone quill if i don't have it for turn three so that's why scuttle is better in this deck than i think in blue steel blue steel has a lot more stuff that it can do early game a lot more variability and its game plan is different uh than uh this is i mean they're similar but they're different right so um yeah uh, that's this deck and that is six decks to get you started with ursula's return set four of the lorcana gameplay of uh, lorcana tcg man that was uh misspeaking right there but i hope you guys enjoyed i i promise the gameplay is coming uh, i just wanted to do this video and I kind of wanted to, you know, let you guys know that, you know, I apologize, but, you know, real life comes, happens sometimes, and, you know, um, I had to change a lot of stuff that was in my life, and my schedule is a lot different now, and so I just had to, um, had to adjust. But I'm back, I'm here, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy these decks, and let me know if you want to see a specific deck, let me talk about a specific deck. All my decks are on Dreamborn, I'll, I make them public, I'll put the links down below. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe uh, if you like the content and if you don't want to miss any more videos. Peace.